Hi everyone, welcome to week six. Uh, so week six is kind of weird because we have reading week in the middle of week six. Uh, so just note that you should have a week off. So make sure to definitely take a couple of days where you're not looking at anything, like no math, no science, no computer science, nothing, like nothing. Take a couple of days off minimum to at least take a break. Um, on the other days, feel free to like catch up on anything you're behind on um, in either this class or other classes. Um, or in work or whatever. Uh, but do definitely try to take a break because breaks are super important in actually learning and processing information. Uh, so please try and do that. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is um, week, uh, the tail formula. And so, um, I mean, since there's reading week, I don't know when people are gonna be watching this. So it could be that it's been two weeks since, you, since uh, week five material. So in week five, what we basically did is we talked about this thing called the expected value, right? So we had some formula, um, the expected value, and this we said is just the summation over all possible x's. Um, and we do x times the probability that our random variable x is equal to this little x. Um, and this basically was like similar to basically calculating averages, right? So this is where like the mean and average kind of comes from, the expected value. Um, and so another way we actually saw this last time was also through um, indicator functions. So remember how if um, we can take our um, random variable x and we can make it, uh, we, we know that this is going to be a sum of multiple things. Um, and we let xi denote the indicator function. So uh, let me see where this is. They've changed all of the, they updated the app. So my app's a little different. So it's gonna take me a second. Um, so if we let xi denote the indicator function, uh, so in other words, this is where um, something either happens or it doesn't happen with some probability. So we don't have multiple options, we just have one option, either yes or no. Um, and so in that case, uh, remember what we basically had is that we set this equal to um, xi, right? Uh, or uh, this little x becomes nothing, it becomes one. So we end up getting e of x is equal to, uh, so we're gonna sum up over all of the um, xi's. Uh, the little x becomes one, so we don't have to include that, and we just sum over um, all the x's. So this little x, remember, oop, why is this so small? Uh, this little x becomes uh, one, right? So that's why it's just one times everything. So we just sum up all the probabilities. Um, so since this equation actually looks nice, we're gonna take this and kind of um, go a little further with it. Um, and basically what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna look at the case where x is coming from some set. So suppose we're, we have some set like this. Um, so very similar to kind of what we're doing here right, um, where we're going over i equals 1 through n. Um, and let's kind of see what we get for the expected value. So normally here, remember, we have e of x is equal to the sum of x times p of x is equal to little x, right? So here, if we make x go from 0 to n, well, if x is equal to 0, we get 0 times something, so nothing happens. If we have x is equal to 1, uh, so here, this is x is equal to 1. We only have one term. Uh, this line, we have x is equal to 2. So here we would have 2 times p of x equals 2. Since there's two of them, we'll break them up into the two parts, part 1 and part 2. Um, and we can kind of do this for all of them, right? So for x equals 3, we have 3 of them. So we have 3 times p of x equals 3. So 1 two, three, um, and that's basically what we have. But notice what this actually gives us is a second way to write our, um, um, our expected value. So what we had been doing is going from left to right, so, um, and then up to down. So what we had been doing is kind of going like this. Ooh, this is thick, thick and juicy. We are going to make this smaller. That is way too big. Can I make this smaller? There we go. Um, 
so we did this and then this, I guess we keep going and then this, etc. right? So that's how the, originally we did the expected value. But now what we're going to do is kind of go uh, the different direction. We'll go this way. We'll go up to down. So we'll go up to down and then up to down and then up to down. So what do we have? Uh, so what we have is this first term is P of X greater than or equal to one, right? That's just summing everything up from one to um, N. Uh, and then we have X is greater than or equal to two is the next line, right? Cause we start off on the second part and then we have X is greater than or equal to three and we kind of keep going. Um, so what do we end up having is we have another way of writing uh, the expected value. So the expected value in this case is just e of x is equal to the sum from i is equal to um, 1, I guess, to n, right? Because we started off with 1. And here we have p of x is greater than or equal to i. Um, and this is basically, this is just um, what's called the tail sum formula. Um, so let me highlight this the tail sum formula for expected value. That was thick. Why does everything start off so thick? There we go. Um, and that's it. So it's not too complicated of an idea. It's just a different way of looking at things. Um, so we'll stop here for this video. And then in the next video, I'll give an example of how the tail sum formula is helpful in figuring things out where, where this actually is more helpful than like just trying to solve it um, in the other way. Uh, so I will see you in the next video.